Hi and welcome to another video on learning Photoshop. Now in this video I want to show you a pretty amazing selection feature in Photoshop called Refine Edge. Now Photoshop is great at making selections when you've got nice sharp defined edges. Brilliant. However, with things like hair and fur it fails abysmally. Enter Refine Edge. This makes making complex selections easy. Now here we've got an image of a studio shot uh, in a, this two layer document and it's above a, a, an image of a, a sunset. And I'd like to make a cutout. Now I've got a couple of different issues here. I've, I've got a nice selection edge here which I could cut out quite easily. But I've also got some, hmm, some interesting areas that I need to select which is around the hair. So let's have a look at how to do that with Refine Edge. Now any, any selection tool you select now, so I'm going to select let's say the Quick Selection tool, but it works with any of them, you will get a button called Refine Edge. But at the moment it's greyed out, it won't let me do anything. And this is because I haven't selected anything yet. So what I'm going to do, get a nice sized brush and you can make this bigger or smaller using the square bracket keys. I'm just going to make it an initial selection. Now this doesn't have to be super accurate, but obviously the, the better you can get it, the less work there is for Photoshop to do. So especially around the, the high contrast areas, I'm going to get it as accurate as I can. That looks good. And I'm not really that bothered about around the hair. You can see it's pretty ratty around the hair, but everywhere else it doesn't look bad. And now Refine Edge comes into life. OK, so I'm going to click on that to get the Refine Edge dialog. And you can see it's now superimposing what it thinks is the cutout of the background. That's one of the view modes. You can select different view modes. You can just have it as Marching Ants as we did earlier. You can have it as an overlay or you can have it on black just to check out these edges or on white. Or you can just look at the mask. My preference on this is what they call on layers because it shows me what's going off. OK, so I'll just shut that down by just clicking on a, any neutral area in the, in the Refine Edge box. Right, so let's have a look at what's actually happening here. At the moment we've got this edge detection feature and it's set to zero. So basically there isn't any edge detection. We've got a, a little box up here called Show Radius, or I could press the J key. But if I click on that, everything goes black because this is showing me the radius. And at the moment, I haven't got one. All I've got is my selection, which is like a scalpel cut. What I need to do is to tell Photoshop to search outside of that selection, either side of it. And this is where the radius comes in. If I move this radius to the right now, you'll see that I'll start to see a little gap appear. And this is the radius. So at the moment, so let's go up to say two pixels. What Photoshop is now doing, it's searching two pixels inside that selection and two pixels outside the selection. So it's got like a four pixel band where it's searching for contrast. Now if I just turn that off, now what you'll see is that where we've got a nice contrasty edge anyway, it picks it up really nicely. That's, that's done a pretty good job. Probably just a little bit more. Or not. No, I'll leave that down at about two, yeah. Now you can see we've got a good edge, but here the hair is still pretty ratty, still pretty awful. But down here, on these nice contrasty edges, it's pretty good. Now what we could do with is being able to define two different radiuses, or is it radii or radiuses? Anyway, there's two of them. Now what we've got is the smart radius. So if I click on smart radius and then go up and show you the radius again, you'll see that nothing's changed. We've still got that two pixel radius. But now we've got these two tools here. 
If I click on here, we've got the Refine Radius tool and the Erase Refinements tool. Well, I want the Refine Radius tool to start with. And again, it's on a brush, so I can make it bigger or smaller with the square bracket keys. And what I'm going to do is start painting. Now, I'm not painting with paint, I'm painting with radius, basically. So what I'm doing is, I've still got my finger on the mouse button, I haven't released it yet, but what I'm saying to Photoshop is searching this new area for any contrast edges like hair. And then when I let go, you see how it's found these and it's, it's took all the white away. Well, and I'm going to paint down this way again and let go. And you can see it's found a lot more hair. Now you can continue to go around or you, you can switch the radius off and, you, and do it in live view. So here I can now click down this side drag into here and you can see how it's looking for areas where it says well there's white there and there shouldn't be white there so I'm going to take it off so I'm going to go all the way down there a couple of times and that's pretty good I've got quite a lot of nice little feathery hairs coming in there I'm quite pleased with that so if you go too far that's what the erase refinements tool is you can actually erase the refinement that you've already done but we're looking pretty good so i'm going to leave that as it is we've got the adjust edge features you can basically make the edge smoother you can feather it you can add a little bit of contrast and if you want you can shift the edge in or out let's just shift it in maybe a pixel something like that so we're actually contracting that radius edge in now on the output side we've got this thing called decontaminate colors now if you look at the edge of these little strands of hair here you'll see that there's some little white pixels or lighter pixels going around the outside of them and this is because it wasn't quite sure if that was an edge or not because some of these are probably slightly out of focus slightly blurry so it doesn't know so it brings the white pixels with it so we've got a bit of a halo going on now if i activate decontaminate colors what that's going to do is it's going to examine all those edges and if the pixels that are on the outside of it vary by a lot from the color of the hair it's going to change them to the color of the hair so if you just watch that in action i'm going to click and i'm going to drag that over to the right and look at that wow <laughs> absolutely enormous that is that is brilliant that is a fabulous cutout you know I, I think i need to lie down in a darkened room after watching that i think that is absolutely brilliant okay so we've now we're now reaching the end and we need to output it so we've got now the output to and we have several options we can output to a new layer to a new layer with a layer and mask a new document and a new document with a layer mask i just want a new layer with a layer mask and then i'm going to click ok and up here in the layers panel now it's put us a copy of the layer and it's put the layer mask in there now if i just want to show you the mask if you hold the alt key down and click on the mask it just shows you the mask area and this is absolutely staggering the amount of detail that this has found now there's a little bit of a gray area going on and we've missed a bit up there so what i'm going to do is just refine this mask a little bit so i'm, I'm going to make sure that i've got white as my foreground color so i'm going to just click that little doohickey there to swap the colors around i'm going to select a paintbrush and I'm just going to paint with white inside the mask anywhere where I'll need to paint it. Where we just don't need them edges there. Well, that's not bad. And there is a little bit of a light area going on here. So I'm just going to try and darken that because I want that to be black in there. So now I'm going to select black as my foreground colour. And you can click this little doohickey or press the X key. And I'm going to set my blend mode to overlay and this should protect the white areas a little bit now you only get one chance to do this if you keep doing it you'll end up with very ratty edges but i'm just going to drag over that once 
just to darken that down and because we've set it to overlay it will protect the white areas I'll just give it a dab there just once that's good I'm happy with that right I'm gonna hold the alt key down and click on the mask again to bring it back that is pretty good and I think we're good to go now I think I'd like to finish it off by just getting the colours to look a bit better because at the moment we've got obviously an imbalance of colours this was a studio shot very warm this is an evening shot quite cool with those sky tones so I'd like to have a mix of both I'd like to blend the model into the background a little better and for that I'm going to use match colour but I need to work on my layer at the moment I'm, I'm working on my mask I need to work on the layer so I'm just going to click on that layer and then I'm going to go over to image and adjustments and match color and that's going to bring me my color dialog box up now I'm starting down at the bottom here where it says source and my source is going to be the image that I've got up which is this 842.cr2 I'm going to click on that and then the layer this is the layer where you want the color to come from well I want it to come from the background layer I'm going to click on that and you can see what it's done is now it's bringing a lot of the colors through from the background into the model now we've got a fade slider so I can pull that fade slider just to fade the effect so if I come right down to here I'm, I've got no effect so I can look at this in terms of where do I think it looks realistic quite like that there is a neutralize and this will try and take out any adverse color effects so I can probably drop that down a little bit more and we've got luminance so I can brighten it up a little bit but you can see now I'll just hit the preview so we've gone from there to there so she's now blending in a lot better with that background okay I'm happy with that so I'm going to click OK to put that little to bed well that's it how to make an absolutely staggering cutout of hair using the refine edge feature in Photoshop I do hope you found that useful if you did please give me a thumbs up or leave a comment under the video in the comments area also click on the subscribe button so you don't miss future episodes I love a challenge so if you've got something specific you'd like me to uh, to tell you about please leave me a message in the comments and I'll try to make a video on it other than that have a great day thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video bye for now